I am about to blow your mind. Hello, hello, happy two truths and a lie day. If you are watching the replay, hold tight. I gotta, I gotta make some, uh, some space in the beginning to allow some people to hop on so people who are joining live don't miss the beginning. So I'm gonna drink some water, I'm gonna chit chat to you about my day and then we're gonna get into it. I'm always talking about how I can't just sip water. I can't just take a sip of water. It's like I end up chugging it every single time. All right, we got some live viewers here. If you are live, please say hello. <clears throat> I'm gonna blow your mind today, or at least I think I am. If I don't blow your mind today, it's because you're already up to date on good stuff. Um, but I hope to blow at least some minds today. I'm in the pro I'm in the I'm in the business of mind blowing. What's up? Please state your name for the courts. Um, I can't see your name because it says Facebook user. So I'd love to know who's here watching today. Say hello. We're talking diet drinks versus water. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, very well done notes because I, um, Megan, what's up? So glad to see you here because I, I chicken scratched them before I hopped on. Sometimes I'm like very well, like thought out notes. I hate the way my hair always shows up on this thing. Um, and other times I'm off the cuff. So today we're gonna be a little bit off the cuff. I'm gonna share some things with you. Um, let's go ahead and bring up, <clears throat> well, I'll do that in a sec. <clears throat> I want to remind you that we are doing a steps challenge this week. So make sure that you're getting your steps in this week. It's a little harder because it's getting colder outside. So I actually think that's a great time to do a step challenge because it forces you to like level up and be a little bit more creative. And just when we're getting a little bit more settled into our office chairs, it's like, no, you need to actually um, try a little harder to find areas that you can get, get some movement in because it's only going to get harder when January, January, and February hit. Right. So right now in the group is a steps challenge for a free coffee on Friday. So make sure that you are posting for that. Last week, we didn't have a lot of outside participation. We had a lot of foundations members, our strong body foundations, small group coaching course, they get an extra chance to win. So we gave away one cup of coffee last Friday. Um, but I would love to give two, one to a foundation foundations member and one to um, everybody else in our group. So make sure that you are getting your steps in and posting for accountability. It doesn't have to be a picture. It can just be a statement. Um, I posted my post, but I need to be doing them more as well. So you'll see me posting in there today because I'm going to get up off my butt and walk after I've done this. So, all right, let's get into two truths and lie, diet soda versus water. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share our um, two truths and a lie for this week. And we're going to go through it. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So number one was that water is better than diet soda for weight loss. Notice I said weight loss. I didn't say health. I didn't say body fat. I didn't say ultimate functionality. I said for weight loss. So make sure you're reading the words. Um, sometimes they matter and sometimes they don't. <laughs> uh, number two, well, let's go to number three, because a lot of times two of them will directly contradict each other. So water is better than diet soda for weight loss. And number three directly contradicts that. Both diet soda and water can be equally beneficial for weight loss. Those directly contradict each other. So one of them has got to be the lie. That's usually your trick. If you can find two that directly contradict each other, then that usually means that one of them is the lie. Um, a couple people guess two, and usually that leaves me with the question, but how can one and three both be true, right? So number two says that diet soda can greatly help in weight loss due to its ability to satisfy sweet cravings. Things, okay. Which one is the lie? Um, I never know. Like, should I answer now or should I keep you waiting? <laughs> the lie is number one, that water is better than diet soda for weight loss. That is a lie. Water and diet soda can actually be equally good for weight loss. Why is that true? Let's look at the research, right? I have research to share with you. Um, and here it is. All right. So let's go back over here. Oh, I hate it when this happens. It's like, what screen do I look at? All right. So we got this study here. Well, no, it's not a study. I keep missing it up. This is a meta analysis. All right. So I'm going to go through a little bit of this with you. And those charts in particular are what we're going to look at. So this is a meta analysis of, um, of a lot of, of 17 different studies 
with the average age of participants being about 33. So it was like 24 to like 38 year old people. Um, and what they looked at with well, the different studies that they looked at were they looked at studies that compared water to diet drinks. They looked at studies that compared diet drinks to sugary drinks. They looked at uh, uh, studies that compared water to sugary drinks, right? So they looked at all these studies. They didn't look at every single study that was out there. They only picked ones that met certain criteria. Um, some of them, a lot of the criteria has to do with how well the, the, the research was done. If they met certain criteria with number of participants, um, the range of the participants, um, the, the type of lab that it was done in, um, if it was based on just like, you know, uh, visual data or just observational or, cause that's not a good study if it's just observational data, or if it was based on actual, like, you know, studies and data and, um, you know, getting blood work and things like that. So how well was the data that was collected versus if it was observational? And another thing that's looked at when they're looking at the quality of studies that they're going to look at, because that's what a meta-analysis is. A meta-analysis is when they take a bunch of research studies that have already been done, these singular studies that have been done over years, they take a bunch of them, they qualify them based on good ones versus bad ones. And then they take all of the ones that are qualified as good and decent research, and then they write an article, essentially, spanning the summary of what all of these tend to say. So a lot of times a single study will come out, but, you know, we really have to think like, well, you know, was it well done? Was it done on humans or was it done on animals? Because animals respond differently. What was the dosage? Are we giving rats uh, an, an extremely high amount of something, or are we, are we giving humans a moderate amount of something? Like that's going to make a difference, right? Um, who's funding the study? So something that's been a, a thing recently, I don't know if you guys pay attention to nutrition research, but like alcohol, a lot more research has been coming out about the effects of alcohol. And it turns out much to our dismay that there is literally zero health benefit to drinking any kind of alcohol, even if it's red wine it's literally all negative. <laughs> there are all negative responses in our body to any dose of alcohol. That's just what it is. Does that mean you should never drink again? Not necessarily. So it's like a whole other conversation, right? But the fact of the matter is a lot of the research, quote unquote, studies that have been done on alcohol in the past that support red wine are shocking done by alcohol industry. So you can't really um, necessarily trust a biased source, right? So in a study, in a meta analysis like this, where we're looking at lots of studies, they make sure to take that into account too. If a quality study is not one that was done by like Coke, <laughs> if Coca-Cola does a study that shows that, oh, look at that drinking Coca-Cola is actually beneficial for weight loss. Then that's not, that's a biased study, right? So we, we want to throw that one out. We're not going to look at that one. So all of the studies that were done, that were looked at in this meta analysis were ones that met certain criteria. So we can know that they are, um, you can kind of trust what's going to come out. And a meta analysis is always better than a study because we're looking at instead of a singular moment in time, which is what a study is, a meta-analysis looks at multiple moments in time and takes that data and um, and really aggregates it and looks across the span and sees what the average response is, which is always going to give you more information. It's always going to give you something uh, more to look at. We're going to be looking at more participants over a wider range and done in different uh, environments and study protocols and et cetera, and we're going to get better data from that, okay? So this is a meta-analysis, and it... It was about 17 studies that they ended up after all of the criteria that they were looking at. And the conclusion essentially is diet sodas. Well, this is interesting. Diet sodas were actually associated with a more significant reduction in body weight when compared to water. Okay. Diet drinks were also associated with a more significant decrease in blood pressure. Interesting, right? Do we know exactly why? No, we can take some guesses. Um, but what I want to show you in this in particular was, so we have all this information. What's the problem? How was it? How were the study? What's the hypothesis purpose? Blah, blah, blah. How did they test? All right. But then we get down here to the charts. Um, and this is what I, I showed you guys last time with uh, um, the free weights versus the, the, the free weights versus machines. So when we first look, this is, I don't remember exactly what these stand for, but sugary beverages. Um, yeah. Sugary beverages here. So we've got whether these studies overall favored sugary beverages or these were diet beverages. So clearly we see in terms of weight loss and some other, and some other markers that compared to sugary drinks, obviously the diet drinks are going to win out, right? Who knows why these two skewed are here. If we go down here, we have water compared to sugary drinks. Clearly we see that water is the winner in all of these, right? Then we go down to water compared to sugar, um, to water compared to diet drinks. 
and we kind of have a bigger you know skew here so we have some favoring water the ones that do favor water seem to largely favor water but then we have actually most of the studies that favor diet drinks right diet drinks <laughs> why i said it like that and but they all most of them seem to only slightly favor diet drinks okay but overall if we look at all of these we've got stuff that's roughly in the middle okay so then that obviously brings up a talking point so i think i can stop sharing this with you guys now. So that obviously brings up a, talk, a talking point. Now, obviously no study is 100% conclusive, um, but this meta-analysis shows that diet drinks do not negatively impact weight loss. They don't negatively impact body composition or cardiometabolic like risk factors, okay? And this is obviously something that is claimed by many online experts, nutrition experts, right? So this isn't necessarily saying like, oh, you should go drink diet soda as all of your or diet drinks as all of your liquid. Um, but this is definitely, they can definitely be a helpful tool, right? So any, it, and it brings up a good talking point as well, because essentially you guys probably see a lot of dangerous information online, right? So I want you to know that a lot of the, the, the studies or the information that you see online that are dangerous are usually one of three things. They're usually cherry picked. So cherry picking information that and taking it completely out of context when the context actually changes the entire course of what the thing was originally. So you see this all the time. I don't know if you guys, I hope none of you guys follow this guy named Bobby on Instagram. Bobby is always in the grocery stores telling you this is poison, buy this one instead. And he seems very believable. He cherry picks so bad and he cross, he's always contradicting himself. He'll say sugar's bad in one video, it's poison. Don't buy it because it has sugar in it. And then he's literally cooking with sugar in another video. So constantly cherry picking and um, and and going against things that he says. So this is done a lot, unfortunately. Uh, another thing that uh, a lot of these studies that claim that things are so dangerous are done, like I said, on rats in extremely high doses. So you might see a study done on aspartame, aspartame, I always call it aspartame, aspartame that says it's, you know, causes cancer. When in reality, they studied it on rats and they studied it in doses that in order to replicate that in a human, a human would have to drink like 30 bottles of soda every single day for a certain amount of years in order to replicate the, um, the dose that they gave the rat, right? Um, so things like that, where it's, you know, it's done on an animal and it's done in an extremely high, unreasonable dose. The tofu study, soy is always, the studies done on soy, the studies done on soy always do this. They study it on another animal and they do it in extremely high doses. So a person would have to be eating literally nothing but tofu in like triple the amount, amount of calories that you would even have it. You have to be eating like 6,000 calories per day of pure soy in order to get a fraction of the effect that we see in rats, right? So they're done in these ex environments, extreme environments that don't actually make any sense. All right. Um, and another thing that they often do are they're, they're funded by an untrusted source. Like I said, if it's done by the meat industry, if it's done by the dairy industry that is demonizing soy products in order to get you to buy more dairy and believe in meat, whatever, if it's done by Coke in order, you know, and it's obviously showing that diet sodas are great, you know, we don't, necessarily want to take that research. But how are you supposed to know? How are we as the consumer, as the everyday average person supposed to differentiate? Well, you can't. I mean, it, unless you want to be somebody that reads research, you can't. Then so you have to go to like certain specific trusted sources, right? Which I'll talk about in a sec. But there is currently no evidence to support that diet soda, even daily diet soda or diet drinks, have a negative impact on body weight, cravings, water retention, health, et cetera, okay? Remember, it's really important to remember that the dose makes the poison in almost all situations. Um, there has been research recently that shows something happening in the body and the gut in response to aspartame and other artificial sweeteners, but not enough to show necessarily something dangerous. So something doesn't necessarily mean bad. I mean, obviously the body has, and the gut has a response to carbohydrate uh, digestion. It has a response to protein digestion. It has a response to sugar. Um, but there seems to be, but we know those responses. We've seen them. We've seen them often. We've studied them. We know what happens now that we don't have really a lot of questions about it, but there seems to be a unique response, something different that happens in the gut when artificial sweeteners are introduced. Again, um, 
it suggests that something is happening, but as of now, all evidence points to artificial sweeteners in small doses, even daily, being completely safe to consume. Something is happening. There's a response in the gut, but all biomarkers, all um, you know, weight loss, all in fact, when weight loss, even when this gut response is happening, if the pers person studied is experiencing weight loss, that weight loss usually corrects so many other biomarkers like blood pressure and um, and blood blood readings, et cetera, that it negates anything that even possibly could be happening that's negative response in the gut, right? So it's like kind of comparing all of these things and big picture. Um, and another argument for artificial sweeteners is like, well, it's on the carcinogens list. It's on the list of, and, and that is true. But again, this is one we're, we're cherry picking. Um, there are different categories of carcinogens and they're really easy to understand. Number one is, yes, it is carcinogenic, it, it is carcinogenic to humans. Uh, level two is it's probably carcinogenic to humans. Level two B is it's possibly carcinogenic to humans. And then level three, I believe category three is probably not. Okay. So we have yes, probably, maybe, and probably not. Okay. Those are our categories. And the things that are in category one, yes, these are carcinogenic to humans. We know it and it is on the list are things like wood dust. Okay. Um, UV rays processed meats and alcohol, all things that people, wood dust, I don't know, a lot of people are, are interacting with wood dust pretty regularly, but UV rays, processed meats, alcohol, a lot of people are consuming these daily. Yet we're going to demonize something like artificial sweeteners, which are on level 2B. Le artificial sweeteners are on level 2B, which is not this one. <laughs> level 2B is um, possibly, possibly carcinogenic to humans. That just means this is something that it's on the possibilities list. We need more research in order to confirm it. And we need more research in order to confirm, like I said, what dose this is at. So it very well could be that artificial sweeteners or aspartame are carcinogenic to humans when it is taken in extremely high doses, you know, 20 sodas per day um, for 10 years every day. Then we see it, you know, that cancer develops, right? It would still be on the list, but note that this is the dose, the dose makes the poison, right? Which nobody is drinking that amount in a day. It's very small amounts and your body processes it out. So there's arguments of like, well, what about the buildup in the system? It doesn't build up in your system. Your body digests it and processes it out. So anyway, all things to take into account, the dose makes the poison. I want you to know that we get all of our research from trusted sources. So when we talk about how do you know, well, you don't necessarily know by seeing one study. If you see a study put out in New York Times, if you see a study put out by your favorite Instagram person, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's uh, like a trusted source. So we get our, our, our information literally from three, three people <laughs> or three people in the industry that are all very well known, all very largely trusted in the industry that we get our research from. Um, whenever I see other stuff out there, I always go to these three first and I do some research to see if they've covered it. Usually they have, maybe sometimes they're behind the research, um, very trusted in industry. Um, also remember that good research is always changing. Good research is always changing. So a lot of times um, people, the general population people will be like, you know, oh, this, this guy has changed his stance. I don't necessarily trust him. Just because an expert has changed their mind does not mean they're untrustworthy. And actually it is way, uh, it's, it's very positive for somebody to change their stance based on new research, then to hold rigidly to false ideas and be unwilling to shift when like more research or evidence is provided. Right. So we want experts to be open to changing their mind. We want trainers and nutrition coaches and the everyday trainers and nutrition coaches be open to saying, actually, I used to think this was true. And I don't, I don't hold that belief anymore based on the research that I've seen or based on my experience with my clients. It doesn't necessarily match. Right. So all things to keep in mind. So the end conclusion of all of this is that sure. In some of these studies, it seemed like diet soda actually played out. But the bigger answer is that they can be equally as good. Water and diet soda can be equally as good in improving health, improving um, body composition, and uh, helping people lose weight for weight loss. Now, if you guys have questions, please pop them now because I don't hang around a lot at the end unless I have questions ready to go because there's like this big gap. But if you have any comments or questions, please pop them now. I'll get to them because I'm almost done. Um, but something to consider so a couple people in the in the comments of the thread for the two truths and a lie, there was some interesting 
discussions happening. And one of the reasons that diet sodas or diet drinks can be very beneficial actually to people experiencing weight loss, especially people who are like habitual consumers of sugary drinks, you're literally replacing those calories in those sugary drinks with zero calories. So clearly that is going to help somebody lose weight if they're a habitual soda drinker. And it can help satisfy that craving that they normally have throughout the day for the drinks that they want to have. It helps satisfy that craving for no calories, right? So very easy to understand why that would be beneficial in weight loss. However, some of the people in the comments were like, actually, it's the opposite effect for me. When I have a diet soda, um, I actually want to snack more because I kind of associate it with that. And it kind of actually increases my cravings. And this makes sense too. It totally depends on the response of the person. For me, that doesn't happen. I absolutely love when I am in a situation where I can get a large like fountain, like diet Coke or Coke zero. And I sip on that thing. And I just feel like suburban mom when I'm sipping on my diet Coke, like in Costco, uh, it was one of my favorite things to do in Costco in the States. I can still do it here, but it's just, it's just different in the States. I could walk right in. I'd get my giant soda. I'd walk around and I felt like such suburbia image of suburbia. But anyway, it had the opposite effect. It was like a treat. I was able to have this treat and, you know, no calories and it felt really good for other people. They associate it with, you know, if you, the only time you ever have soda is when you're like eating nachos and watching the game, then no matter if it's a diet soda or regular soda, you're going to have that association and you're going to want to snack. Right. So that makes total sense. This is where it's very individual. If drinking diet soda for you actually makes you snack more than for you, then it's, that's not going to be true. Right. But for the majority of the population, especially people who are trying to experience weight loss, if they're able to substitute um, a, a high calorie drink for a low calorie or zero calorie one, that's going to be beneficial. If they are able to satisfy a craving for something sweet with a zero calorie soda, then that's going to be beneficial. That's going to help them lose weight. And for somebody who has weight to lose where their weight and their body fat is literally impacting other health biomarkers and their ability to do things that would otherwise bring them to a point of being quote unquote healthy, then simply losing that weight, no matter the means actually is going to be beneficial for their health overall. Right? So Overall, big picture, diet sodas and water are equally beneficial in helping people lose weight and improve their health. And there is no evidence to support them being dangerous, um, especially in a normal everyday dose. Even if you have one a day, it seems to be totally fine. So that's that. Two truths and a lie. Um, I'm going to pop over here and see if you guys have any comments or questions. You do not. <laughs> so if you're here watching the replay, please let me know. Please say replay and say that in the beginning. Um, I would love to know that you guys are engaged and seeing this. Um, and I'm excited to do another two truths and lie with you next week based on solid research. If you guys have any questions after the fact, if you think of anything that this makes you think of, if you have any comments, if you have any stories that it kind of relates to you or whatever, pop them below. I will hop in the comments and continue this conversation with you guys. Um, have a great rest of your evening or day, wherever in the world you are, and we will chat soon. Peace.